Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. This time I'm at it again with my uh, my fat PS2. Currently this has a 120GB IDE hard drive in. It's a 3.5 inch drive. And that works fine, but it's a pain for getting games on there without ripping it with the internal drive, which is really slow. But I have a bunch of ISOs I ripped already on my computer, so I kind of wanted to uh, just use a USB adapter and then get those games on there. So what I did was I used um, one of the hard drive, the PS2 hard drive loading um, Windows applications or programs, whatever, to put a bunch of my games on this 320 gig, 2.5 inch SATA drive. Now the problem is this is IDE only, so you cannot directly use it, which is where this comes in. And this only ended up being, I think about, 11 or 12 dollars so it's pretty cheap and while they do sell complete uh replacements for the original adapter here um i opted for this upgrade so that i could still retain the uh land functionality and also because i kind of like original things better now i'm gonna need a flathead screwdriver or a coin uh to get this guy off so give me a second ta-da okay so should be able to use this get in there and we're gonna disassemble this adapter here and put in the new uh, SATA board Okay, so here's the drive I've been using. It's a Samsung, and it's from an old computer. But yeah, this is only 120 gigs. It's massive. It consumes a lot of energy, and you can definitely hear it. It makes quite a bit of noise. I'm going to replace it with this tiny little guy just to give you a size reference here. Um, and obviously, I'm going to need to print an adapter uh, piece of plastic that will fit around so that this drive doesn't rattle inside. But this will be good enough for testing until I can print that adapter. So anyway, let's uh, get into this. I'm going to speed through this and show you guys the process. So let's get started. Okay, so we're in. So yeah, a uh, thing to note is after you get all the big screws out, there are these tiny little screws on either side of this uh, multi-way high-speed connector that need to be removed in order to actually pull the shielding out. Now, let's uh, see what else we have to do. I believe we have to take off all these Torx uh, screws, so I'm going to need to find a bit for that. And then, um, basically, I believe we can just leave this board in and disconnect these two connectors. And this will actually go in place of that. So, basically, power will go here, and uh, this guy, if it's long enough, can snake over to here. And, yeah, anyway... Uh, let me get these guys out. Okay, so let's just pull the old power connector and uh, we'll get this zip out by undoing these tabs. It should just pull out like that. Okay, now I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of uh, mounting this up, but just looking by the, uh, the diameter of the... Um, well, the holes and the width and whatnot, it looks like it's going in place of this connector here. So we do not need this pre-fitted little zip. I'll keep that for something else later. And um, we can insert the original one back in. Just lock it down. There, that should be good enough. Now, power connector going to twist it around and fit it in there. I'm going to hopefully be able to just tuck this underneath. Yeah, there's plenty of room inside. And there are some standoffs and screws, and I'm guessing those go right in there. And these are Phillips, good. So, keep the uh, all the parts from the original in case I ever want to, for some reason, go back to an IDE, but... SATA is obviously uh, the way to go now. 
Okay, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to have to fit these on and thread the screw down. There we go. And there is a little bit of compliance. Yeah, so that, that looks good to me. I'll just give these a little snug up. Don't need to make them too tight, though. And we're good to go. So, yeah. Um, that was actually really easy. <laughs> now the, uh, test, the real test is actually seeing if it all works. So, I'm just going to put the uh, original shielding back on. There we go. Make sure it clears the bottom of the connector. And we're going to get all these screws back in. And there we go. We're all back together, just like brand new. Uh, but now it has the SATA connector. So there's nothing else in the package, and we used all the parts that were in there, so I believe we are done. So let's just give it a test fitting. So we got our SATA drive here, upside down. Okay, so label side up. And yeah, fits. It's a little bit crooked. Um, okay. Okay, so I just tried it and it didn't recognize the drive at all. The drive didn't even spin up. So one mistake that I made, a kind of a rookie mistake, a little embarrassing, is I used the original connector. Here you can see both the blue tabs are on the, the top side. The one that they provided, uh, one blue tab is on the one side, the other is on the other. So obviously you have to use the cable that they included because it actually needs to like flip the connectors um, because if you hook it up like this, it would go like this. The uh, connectors are facing up, the pins are facing up, uh, but on here all the pins are on the bottom, so it was as if it weren't even connected. <laughs> so anyway, now I got to put this back together uh, with this cable, and then I'm, I'm sure this will work now. I was just being silly that I wanted to reuse the old connector. Anyway, let me get this all back together again. Okay, and once with that fix in place with the uh, new ribbon cable, which definitely works, um, I have the 2.5 inch drive in here right now, and as you can see, I have a crap load of my games loaded and good to go. So yeah, anyway, um, this was actually a very simple mod to do. It was pretty cheap. I know you can get uh, complete adapters that are already pre-made for about 20, 15 to 20 bucks, so a little bit more than what I paid. But with um, the way I did it, I get to use the original adapter and it just looks so much better. So anyway, let's just uh, fire up Final Fantasy X and see if that works. Flashing lights are pretty. And there we go. We're in like Flynn. And... Yep, there we go. Anyway, yeah, everything works. And now I have a 320 gig drive in there that uh, consumes much less power than this. And in terms of the access speed, um, I don't notice a difference. So it's not like I'm, I'm uh, having to wait longer for games to load or anything like that. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. And this means also that I could upgrade this to a one terabyte or two terabyte in the future for not too much. Um, but yeah, definitely this is a definite, definite worthwhile. If you have one of these fat PS2s and you have a, uh, memory card with a uh, Fram MC boot on here, then, um, definitely get one of these hard drive adapters and, uh, make sure it's SATA. I mean, if you want to use IDE, that's fine if, if that's what you have, but I think that this kind of makes it a lot more future proof. I can easily add, uh, games onto the drive and whatnot and the sizes so to get a ide drive that's like larger than you know about one you know larger than like 200 uh gigabytes is going to cost you nowadays because these are no longer being manufactured and um if you want to get one in like a terabyte it's going to cost you like probably you know upwards of 50 dollars whereas a one terabyte 2.5 inch sata drive I can get a used one easily for about like 30 bucks. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so it's kind of a no-brainer. And I haven't used the uh, clone drives where they have um, 
pretty much the knockoff uh, SATA version of this hard drive adapter. Uh, but just playing around with the original Sony one and it, it just works every time. I have absolutely no trouble and I like having the option that if I wanted to use the uh, Ethernet for not really online gaming now, but you can actually run um, Homebrew on here, Homebrew Elfs, and you can um, stream games to it over Ethernet or do other really cool things with the networking capabilities. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm definitely going to be playing my uh, PS2 a lot more now, now that I don't have to keep swapping out my discs and whatnot. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.